Alright, it's Brandon with Arabian Night Armory, and today we're going to be talking about what the hell is a Brigandine, what's a Coat of Plates, what's a Corazina. So, on the left here, this is a Visby pattern Coat of Plates. On the right, this is a Fantasy Brigandine. So, to start with, on Historical Armor, Brigandines, Corazinas, Coat of Plates, it's an outer covering that you then rivet metal plates to the inside of. So these are steel, right? And the idea for this is this is easier to manufacture. This is easier to repair. It's not quite as protective as a breastplate. And the reason why it's not quite as protective is because if you get hit in the breastplate, that's one continuous piece of metal across your chest. If you get hit in this, the force of that hit would be spread across that plate and then part of it will go into the plates around it, right? But it's not quite as efficient at dissipating force as, like, plate armor. Um, but another advantage that this has is because it's made of all these segments on the inside, right? It's, it's very flexible. It's very easy to be mobile with this. And so um, anytime you need to, like, contort or reach in a weird direction, a coat of plates, a brigandine, that's going to be a lot better than a breastplate. Um, other things to note is the covering. In this case, uh, I have wool. Uh, the covering doesn't have to be wool. It could be canvas and linen, kind of cotton stuff or, or organic materials like that fabric. Um, wool was also used. Leather was also used. Uh, wool would have been cheaper to produce than leather. So wool would have been a little bit more common. Textiles in general would have been a little bit more common than leather, but leather was still used by all the... Uh, um, by all the countries in Europe at some point, they had leather on the outside of their brigandines and such if they had them. Now, you've also heard me uh, have three different words for this style of armor, and there is differences. So with a coat of plates, you have a lot of large plates, and they fit around the body, but they're not super anatomical. And then when you get to brigandines, which... Um, I don't have a brigandine on the bed here, but a brigandine would be like taking the concept that you see here but having smaller plates that can form a little bit closer to the body. So the advantages you get are you reduce weight while still having the same amount of your body being covered in metal. Uh, and the other thing is you're going to have a little bit more mobility. Um, because obviously, if you broke this up into like four smaller plates, that's four more pieces of articulation. Um, but I, I don't want anyone to ever think like this is going to hinder your movement in a way like, no, this is, this is perfectly fine to fight in. It's not going to like pinch anywhere weird. Um, the, the last version is called a Corazina. So it still has this concept of a, a, a textile or leather covering on metal plates, but with a Corazina, the plates get bigger again, but they're still, uh, anatomically fitted. Right. And so like, there's a lot of patterns of Corazina that are like bordering on this is just a breastplate with a fabric covering and the fabric covering is acting as the articulation instead of having sliding rivets or instead of having floating leathers that, that slide up uh, and down. So, um, yeah, the fantasy brigandine here, this is what often pops up if you Google brigandine. This is not historical at all. And this is, you'll see this in things like Game of Thrones um, this is also a popular thing for LARPers, people that fight in Balagarth and Dagger Hearer, Hearthlight, Amped Guard. Um, the idea that you see here, and this one isn't quite capturing the rule set, but uh, in a lot of these LARP systems, the, the ruling is that your armor has to be so many uh, ounces thick. Leather is measured in ounces. I don't know why it's measured in ounces for thickness, but it is. Uh, and gaps cannot be greater than half an inch. So if you kind of imagine that the gaps here were just a little bit closer together, right? Because this is more than half an inch. But imagine the gaps were a little bit closer. And the concept that you would get from uh, Ninja Brig is another um, name for this kind of fantasy brigandine. The, the idea is you're using as little weight as possible to still get the full uh, protection that leather armor can afford you in your game type. Um, if you tried using this in a real sword fight, it, it wouldn't go well. Because uh, even if, if, if these were smaller gaps that are only half an inch wide or a third of an inch wide or whatever, the two problems are, if somebody swings a steel sword at you, right? If they go here, 
or if they go here, or if they go here, they're basically just cutting through clothing, right? Like this, this base isn't particularly tough. Like it's strong enough to hold up the leather, no problem. But like, this is not stopping a sword. And these plates, so these ones aren't super hardened. Um, sometimes you'll see leather that's hardened using heat. It's called boiled leather. It's not really boiled, but heated water is involved in the process. Or there's also wax hardening. There's a couple different ways to harden leather. And even if this was hardened, even if it was twice as thick as it is now, that still wouldn't do a lot to stop a sword compared to steel plate, right? Because if you think about it, if if you have hardened steel versus a sword made of hardened steel, that's going to be deflective, right? It'll kind of skate. Even with a fabric covering, a lot of that force will be skated off. Can't really do that with leather because the hardest leather possible would still not have that, that uh, sliding skating property on a steel blade. Um, but this certainly still has an aesthetic that some people like, and I think I, that has merit in its own. To me, this has always looked like a Hershey's bar with the little segments of chocolate. Uh, but yeah, so some points on the, the one that I've made here. Uh, some of you might have noticed some progress photos across Facebook or Instagram. Is I have these um, arming tabs across the shoulders. And so you would put laces through here, and that just lets you secure pauldrons on here so that you don't need a separate gorget. And any pauldrons that you would lace, the pauldron would cover this part and that part. And so you'd still get full coverage, and you don't need a separate armor component to do that. Uh, this particular commission was someone who liked Podrick's... Um, Podrick's armor is, I think, pocket brig, which is a little different. But the, the, the concept of fantasy leather brigandine... Um, the pocket brig, if you ever hear that, it's a similar concept to this, except you have um, the base, you have two layers of it, one in the front, one in the back, and these plates of leather are kind of sewn in on the inside in pockets, so that's why it's called pocket brig, but this one I just riveted on the outside because, well, it's easier, a lot faster too, um, but this was someone who really liked Podrick's armor, but there's a couple design differences, I already added those, Super useful for pauldrons, but other things are, on Podrick's armor from Game of Thrones, he doesn't have buckles, he has two D-clips. And the customer doesn't like that, and I didn't like that. Buckles are just a lot more secure. Like, you'd have to pull this out on purpose for this to come undone. But if you just have the leather feeding through a couple D-clips, you can slide that out by accident, just twisting your body. Uh, another thing that I did is, when I put these straps in for the buckle, I made sure that the spacing on the rivets kind of matches the, the spacing on the rivets on the plates themselves. Uh, ooh, this one I have to re-rivet. So, uh, yeah, it, it just visually fits a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, hopefully y'all learned a bit more about brigandines, about the difference between a real brigandine and fantasy brigandine, and I hope you have a good one.